Hi, and welcome to episode four of This Week in Science and Technology. Today, I will satisfy the third requirement that shows why relativity is wrong. Specifically, I'm going to explain how relativity fails to properly explain the Michelson-Morley experiment, which is one of the most important experiments associated with relativity. Although the experiment predates relativity, supporters often cite it as proof of Einstein's work. However, as you'll soon see, the experiment is incorrectly analyzed, and this proof evaporates when viewed using the proper equations. The experiment itself is actually quite clever and was designed to detect how fast the Earth travels around the Sun, which we know is about 30 kilometers per second. Contrary to what appears in many textbooks, this experiment's result is not zero. In fact, the original researchers concluded an Earth velocity of about 5 to 8 kilometers per second. Because 8 kilometers per second is far from 30 kilometers per second, classical mechanics does not provide a reasonable explanation for this experiment. So supporters of Einstein's theory instead argue that the answer must be zero, which then supports relativity. But to do this, they must dismiss the measurement of 5 to 8 kilometers per second, which they call experimental error. But this conclusion is incorrect. Error in math and science is explained in two ways, in absolute terms and with statistics. To show relativity is wrong, I must show that modern mechanics outperforms relativity statistically and in absolute terms. I'll begin with statistics. When the experiment is viewed through a statistical lens, we conclude with 99% certainty that 30 kilometers per second is not the Earth's velocity. But notice, we also conclude with 99% certainty that zero is not the Earth's velocity either. So if we accept the experiment's result, there is less than a 1% chance that classical mechanics or relativity are right. Does this mean that the experiment is wrong? To answer this question, we have to look at a very important equation. Distance equals time times velocity. This is the distance-based equation, and we use it all the time. For example, if you live 300 miles from San Francisco, how long will it take you to drive there if you travel at 60 miles per hour? You quickly apply the distance equation to arrive at five hours as the answer. Michelson and Morley used a version of this equation in their experiment. And here's where things get interesting, because if you look for an obvious mistake in their equation, you will not find one. That's right, their math is right. It just happens to be the wrong math for this experiment. They made a mistake in their units, one that would lead you to get a speeding ticket if you were caught driving 45 miles per hour in a 45 kilometer per hour zone. It's not unlike a mismatch in units that resulted in the Mars Climate Observer crashing into Mars instead of landing safely. But in the case of this experiment, the mistake doesn't result in a speeding ticket or a spectacular crash. This makes it hard to find until we focus on units. In the distance equation, you have as your units distance, time, and velocity. If you have two of these values, you can find the third. Units are important because this equation does not work with weight, age, shoe size, or how many cycles of wire make up your toy slinky. Unfortunately, when Michelson and Morley used their equation, they improperly used cycles instead of distance. Cycles is not a measurement of distance, which means that when they used it in their equation to compute the velocity, they got the wrong answer. This explains why their result doesn't statistically support an answer of 30 kilometers per second or zero. But their use of cycles offers a clue to the correct equation, which uses hertz, or cycles per second. This equation is velocity equals wavelength times frequency. Notice that the distance and wavelength-based equations will both find velocity if you know two other values. 
but the equations will behave differently when expressions are combined. Mathematically, we add when we use the distance equation and we average when we use the wavelength equation. And this is why modern mechanics makes a different prediction than relativity. Imagine driving at 60 miles per hour from San Francisco to San Jose and then returning at 60 miles per hour back to San Francisco. If you add both velocities, you will incorrectly conclude that you traveled at 120 miles per hour. This is essentially their mistake. They added when the correct answer is found by averaging. So the question is, how does the wavelength-based equation compare to the distance-based equation for their experiment? The good news is that when their measurements are converted into a velocity using the wavelength-based equation, I found that they measured the Earth's velocity as 30 kilometers per second. That's right, they were successful. And this answer is statistically supported. Also, notice that the amount of error in absolute terms is about 2 to 3 kilometers per second. This is important because the absolute error associated with relativity is 3 to 4 times as great. And if this wasn't enough, I also found that when Miller repeated this experiment in 1933, he not only got the same answer, his experiment was more accurate. And when two experiments give us the same answer, something that they did not do previously, this gives us confidence that we are using the right equation. So I've shown that the modern mechanics-based equation predicts 30 kilometers per second. The experiment produces 30 kilometers per second when properly analyzed, and that modern mechanics has less error when measured in absolute terms, outperforming relativity. This means I've satisfied the third condition by showing that relativity fails to properly explain the Nicholson-Morley experiment. So in the last three episodes, I satisfied the three requirements that show relativity is a failed theory. I showed that Einstein's spherical wave proof fails, which mathematically invalidates his theory. Then I showed that relativity is a close approximation for modern mechanics. This is important because it means that relativity is no longer unique in its ability to explain certain experiments in observations. And today I showed that relativity fails to explain the Nicholson-Morley experiment, which invalidates the theory on experimental grounds. So now with relativity discredited, I can turn my attention to explaining modern mechanics and its implications, which we'll begin to look at in future episodes. Until then, I'm Stephen B. Bryant, and that's This Week in Science and Technology.